please stand by. We'll be streaming live soon. Good morning. I'm again back into the countryside, and I have my little tent over there, and uh, it's a little small tent down here, and this, uh, these pine trees are a blessing. It's a lot of birds in the air, and uh, it's, it's a place you just park and uh, rest your bones as you travel uh, to the state of Idaho, amen? And uh, I want to share with you continuing how the prophetic works. Obviously, the need over here that I'm referring to has to do with weaponizing your vocal. Weaponizing your vocal. And today I want to talk about what blocks the flow of the prophetic ministry of the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, I do have a master's in speech communication. I do have a, a, a master's in uh, theology and, and a de degree in journalism from the University of Georgia. Uh, so I should have basically <coughs> tools to be a very good uh, teacher or preacher. But the truth is I don't have it. I don't have it because I have not uh, uh, spent time preparing things the way I should since the Lord himself tells me what's next and what to do and how to do it. And so I have to obey. The Somebody said to me yesterday uh, as I went to a, a church called Mount Bethel. It is a, a thriving, powerful church in the, in the city of Atlanta, one of the largest Methodist churches. Now, not united anymore, but Methodist churches in the world. And, uh, and what happened was somebody came to me and said, how? How could you, how can you be successful in ministry, Brother Rick? You've been in ministry for 50 years, and with all the ups and downs that I've experienced, and I told them, the secret is, I do what the Lord tells me to do. I do what the Lord tells me to do. Amen? I do what the Lord tells me to do. So, I want to share with you today on the what blocks the flow of the prophetic? The first one is fear of man. It's not a psychological downfall or an experience that is negative. But obviously, when you look at someone, you have fear due to their stature, their position, who they are. There's a question that you cannot get through that and you cannot speak the person's life because they're much important and bigger than you are. In Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25, has an interesting proverb verses, fear of men brings a snare. But who so puts his trust in the Lord shall be saved. A snare is like an iron ring in the nostrils of a beast. Fear of men leads to lead us around like an animal with a string on his nose. Because it stops due to fear. It stops the flow. I meet so powerful people this weekend. You know, I met uh, one, one man who, in my opinion, has, has uh, done more for uh, the church or universal than, than many, many, many people. And, of course, uh, he is a dear friend, and so I, ha I have no fear of him. But when I met uh, someone taller, bigger, affluential, very gifted person, I sensed that I couldn't speak to him. That's fear of man. It's like an iron ring in the nostrils of a beast. Fear of man leads to, as around like an animal with a ring on his nose. And so... How overcome that? How to overcome something like that? You need to be obedient. If you are in the presence of someone that causes fear within you, you ask the Lord to reveal to you what you need to say, and you say, excuse me, sir, <coughs> I need to have a talk with you. 
<coughs> because if, if, that's, if that is done, it stops the fear of men right away. And you are able then to begin hearing clearly from the Holy Spirit as to how, how he's going to use you. Okay, number one, fear of man. Number two is actually rejection or fear of rejection. That you're not good enough. When, when this person that you're trying to speak to you looks you down, and begin talking to you on another sphere of, of, of knowledge, something totally unrelated, that you have no knowledge of it at all. For instance, as I approach this man, he began talking about uh, 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 the problems with uh, what's happening in Africa, and, and the wars that are there, and the problem with getting passports and visas. Well, you see, uh, it's totally foreign to me to be able to relate to what's happening in Africa, because... All I do is Peru, Cuba, and, and Brazil, and Israel, and Turkey, and I have no relationship with uh, something that's happening in Africa. It's out of my, my fear of, uh, of uh, my, my sphere of thinking, my, my rationale. I, I don't have connections in Africa. And so, now, what compounds here is because the, the treatment of the, of, of, of the parents that you've had and the problems in divorce that you had, and the problems with, then, then you grew doubting that God can actually speak and use you for the sake of his kingdom. And what I'm saying to you is that if that's the case, then you have to recognize that that's the case, that you have a, a, a situation in your personal life that has to be corrected, and you have to address it. How do you do it? You say, Heavenly Father, when I hear something that is totally unrelated to what you're telling me to do, I succumb to that idea and I retrieve into, into a quiet mode of personality. And I don't respond to what's in front of me because I've been interrupted since the man is talking about Africa and I don't know anything about Africa. And so, so you go back and you say, sir, could I talk to you privately? I, I know you want to talk about Africa, but I have a word of you. I have to say something to you. And you prophesy over that man's life. Because, you see, he brought Africa because there's a need there. But since I didn't know nothing about Africa, I lost my interest in the fear of rejection took over me, and I didn't deal with actually the problem that was in front of me. He has a problem in Africa, and I can't help but prophesy uh, 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 in the name of Jesus Christ, in the power of the Spirit of God, that that problem that he has in Africa will disappear. But I lost, I lost a chance. Why? Because I felt rejection. I hope that that speaks to you. Leviticus chapter 21, 21. Leviticus 21, 21. By the way, the book of Leviticus is all about blood. There's more blood in Leviticus than any book of the Bible. Now it says, No man who has a blemish from the seed of Aaron, a leper, shall come near to offer the offering of the Lord made by fire. Imagine. How someone that had or had been healed but still had leprosy in his history is able to approach the throne of God. It's just, just, it's just very, 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 very discouraging because the circumstance of my physical life bared me from coming to God and, and bring in a lamb and let him burn the lamb and offer it to God for my sins. And so life produces all kinds of rejection. All kinds of situations that tend to shut you down. It has to do with your height. has to do with your uh, ethnicity. It has to do with your degrees. You know, when you meet a bunch of doctors and they start talking. I met in Brazil... Uh, uh, three doctors, you know, Dr. Cameron, uh, a, brother, a brother of ours, plus two, three others, and as they talked, I, 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 I felt like somehow I'm in the wrong building. I'm in the wrong building. These guys have no understanding. And I took that in instead of saying, God, you have a word for these doctors. Give me now. Amen. Leviticus 21, 20. 
What this is referring to about the leper is that priests could not have scabs. Scabs are unhealed wounds that, that can become infected. And so, here's a priest that he has a scab happen on his skin and it breaks down. He has to go through a ritual of intense discovery and healing until he comes back to approach an offering to the Lord. So how does, it, uh, how does uh, this idea of rejection works out in terms of... Uh, of the prophetic today in our country right now. Here's a root of insecurity. It says this, I will be accepted if I tell them what they wanted to hear. It leads to flattery. It leads to flattery. It leads to try to please people. It leads into you becoming totally ineffective because you felt the rejection in your life due to what you've been through. The next thing, it's marked because that creates a spiritual scab upon, you, upon your spiritual life. And then you begin to please people. You begin to love people and try to please them in order to gain their favor. I hope that this fear of rejection is understood, that you understood this morning what I'm talking about. You've got to overcome the minors in your life and play on the pluses. You've got to speak in the midst of the most serious confusion or moments when you are turned off by somebody else. Somebody else begins to say something that has nothing to do with what you are hearing from the Lord. And then you back up and you move away and you don't take care of what's in front of you. Number three. Now let's go back. Number one, okay, is fear of man. Number two is rejection or fear of rejection. Now number three Personal opinion, a self-personal opinion of self. Due to your skills in life, for instance, you are a psychologist, you are a doctor, or perhaps you are a, uh, someone uh, well-known uh, in your uh, sphere of knowledge, or uh, uh, someone that uh, you respect a lot. You build your, 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 your prophetic life upon your mental knowledge. And you exercise your mental knowledge. People with high IQs, gifted, have a hard time being prophetic because they listen first to the soul instead of the spirit. The body, soul, and spirit. They listen to the soul. The soul leads them. The spirit cannot get involved because the soul is inflated. When the soul is totally inflated, the spirit is just not able to be in the same vein, okay? In life, it becomes this way right here. The soul rules, but when the soul submits to the voice of the Holy Spirit, then things begin to change. And so, I had a hard time with this. I'm an educated man. I have, I have all, all degrees, and, all, and that was a problem because I wanted to rationalize everything about the Holy Spirit and about prophetic until I begin to live a life to where God says something, pow, I jump on it. I jump on it. It's, it's an interesting thing. I don't delay. I don't, I don't run away from it. I, I speak clearly. Even though this weekend I miss an opportunity. And you have to be attuned to the need of the person in front of you. And if you are even with the need God will begin to flow and bring in what needs to be done. It's a question of a mental attitude and a disciplined mental attitude life, spiritual life. Amen? So God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. You can be going through all kinds of thinking that has to do with the, why uh, the earth is melting. Why is it that... Uh, there's a lot of problems with uh, wars and rumors of wars in the Middle East and everywhere in the world. And, uh, and, and, and the Lord is not there. See, the Lord knows about the wars, but he is active in speaking to human need because it heals. When you receive a word, a prophetic word from the Lord, and you apply that word to that person, it's done. It's a blessing. 
and that person will be totally changed. Amen. Number four, let me just repeat again and, and say to you, uh, number one, what blocks the flow of the prophetic? Number one, fear of men. Number two, rejection and fear of rejection. Number three, personal opinion of self, narrow-mindedness. Number four, bitterness. Bitterness. Now, bitterness is undealt unforgiveness. Bitterness is when, well, people, people begin, to, people even say this, if you have a problem with somebody, and the measure of that problem is personal, is uh, psychological, is, is physical, is spiritual, whatever it is, uh, 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 you are forgiven, but there's no access between you and I. If that's true, then the body of Christ, when they take communion and God forgive their sins, and you ask brother forgiveness, are you corrected by the church? You have to leave the church because uh, you cannot. Stay, there's no access to you. That's of the devil. That's got to be one of the most damaging ways of relating to unforgiveness. That type of unforgiveness is what causes bitterness. You harden within yourself. You had a problem, you're part of the problem, and you are still bitter, angry. So you forgive, but you attach to unforgiveness. You, are, you, are, you attach to forgiveness. You attach rules and regulations in order to somehow not forgive 100%. Forgiveness is unconditional. I'll say it again. Forgiveness is unconditional. There's no condition. There's no situation. There's no behavior. There's nothing that you can separate you from the person you forgive. It's total, complete, all, all complete uh, forgiveness. Unconditional forgiveness is not biblical. Now, what is that bitterness causes? It causes, first of all, uh, hardness. Hardness of mind, body, and spirit. The body becomes rigid. You lose your flow of walking. You are, you, you, your eyes always down, looking down the floor. Your shoulders are pieces of, two pieces of brick. And uh, remove spiritual authority. Now, spiritual authority is a phenomenon that can set free thousands of people. For instance... You have you're a pastor of the church, but above you there's someone who you respond to in spiritual authority. When this someone is removed, God begins to flow from you now all of the blessings of God. If this one on top of you is, is, is encouraging, prophesying over you, blessing you, then it flows down. But when it's not, then the flow simply just stops. Let's say you're a pastor of a church, and there's not much attendance, not many people there. It's not flowing from you. Something is blocking. What is blocking? Bitterness. Hardness. And so anger quenches your testimony. Clutters your direction. And so bitterness is accentuated and, 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 and weaponized unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is one of the problems in the church today. I hope this will help you. Because you are involved, and I'm prophesying now, you are involved into a situation with someone in church that you don't talk to. And so the blessings I've got in your life, the flow of the spiritual life, is not going to that person because you have a problem with that person. Okay? And when you actually de confront that person and you deal with it in, 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 with all kindness, with all gentleness, then it clutters. The clutter disappears. The bitterness disappears. And you are in mutual love and tenderness and kindness with that person, which causes you to be a blessing, and God begins to pour upon you. Bitterness. Let me go to another one. It's called uh, respect of persons. Let me go back and take a look. Number one, fear of men. Number two, rejection of fear of rejection. Number three, 
personal, in, in, in personal opinion, narrow-mindedness. Number four, bitterness. Number five, respect of persons. It's a very difficult one. Especially when the person in front of you has the, the ability to pay all your bills, to give you a car, to just bless your life completely in all step, in all kinds of ways, okay? It's very difficult. Very difficult because you don't know how to approach that person because that person has been good to you and kind to you. And so what do you do? You begin to act very, very foolish. It's a religious spirit, by the way. The high priest carries the stones of the breastplate in his heart. We should carry the whole church of God and not our denomination only. The high priest carries that representing the whole, whole of Israel, all the nation, all the priests and, and all the, the, the Levites included. But when we have respect to persons, we stop the flow of the Spirit. I met a man who said to me, I'm a Methodist preacher all, all my life. I'm a Methodist born, I'm a Methodist breed, and when I die, I'll be a Methodist dead. See, it's idolatry. He respects the church, even though the church many times is wrong. See, the church is represented by a group of bishops, and they make all kinds of mistakes. Don't you tell me that they're perfect. Especially when they are in the flesh themselves. And so, I, I, I read a book of a very powerful lady who wrote about the, the life in the Spirit of God, in the move of the gifts. But she never mentions the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is the primary prior, priority of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church today. 80% of our pastors are not baptized with the Holy Spirit. They need that experience in order to, to produce fruits. And so because you respect the church, you respect the bishops, you respect everybody else, you are just a pleaser of men. I have a lady in our ministry called Elizabeth Wolf. She is a blessing to me and has been a blessing all my life. She told me some time ago in the last 30 years, <laughs> she said to me, Ricky, you are a pleaser of men. And she was right. When I stopped pleasing people, God began using me. I hope you're not a Methodist born, a Methodist bred, a Methodist when I die, a Methodist dead, because you are really then spiritually dead. Idolatry removes you from receiving a prophetic word from God. Idolatry removes you from receiving a prophetic word from God. Don't, don't, don't travel that road. You know, uh, White Herb was a cowboy of the past. And uh, he had a friend, Doc Holliday. And Doc Holliday was a dentist. At that time that they met, both of them, uh, uh, Doc Holliday was uh, dying of, of tuberculosis. And the argument and the, and the questioning in the, across the table was uh, uh, Doc Holliday looked at White Herb and said, White Herb, do you believe in friendship? And White Herb responded, yes, I believe in friendship. Do you believe that uh, 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 there's no respect of person between you and I, that uh, I don't want to be a pleaser and help you to be a pleaser of men? I want to do what uh, the law says to do it clearly. And, uh, and White Herb responded, that's the only type of friends I have. See, friendship can mess up your spiritual life. Because before too long, you're kissing this person in the chest as if somehow, without their opinion, you can't do nothing about the kingdom of God. In other words, you can have a friendship with your pastor that is so close that when it's time to tell him what he needs to hear, you won't do it because you're afraid to lose a friendship. That's what White Herb was, was telling to Doc Holliday. How about that one? Amen. That's a scream of the past. Okay, a skill prophetic minister can deliver the heart of God without partiality. A skilled prophetic minister can deliver the heart of God without partiality because he will not compromise. It has cost me a lot of, a lot of ways. 
And I went to visit a brother of mine, and uh, uh, we sat together, we talked about the kingdom of God, and then I saw his checkbook, and I said to him, the Lord is telling me that you can't do what you did this last year and continue to hear from God, pay taxes, pay taxes. He began to cry because in years past, he, he did not pay proper taxes. See, that type of thing. I hope, uh, hope you're listening. Okay. James chapter 2 verse 9 says this. But if ye have respect to persons, you commit sin. And are convicted by the law as transgressors. Hallelujah. If you have respect of persons, you commit sin. That's how grievous respect of person, James 2.9, is. How difficult to understand. And I'm trying to chew it up a little bit to put stories in between. So you understand that. You want to you prophesy in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and speak in people's lives uh, with a word of encouragement, a word of love, a word of tenderness, a word of correction. You've got to know that unless you, you stop the respecting the person, God will not use you. All right. Number six, human compassion. Human compassion on that which God has judged is to miss what God is doing. Human compassion, compassion on which God has judged is to miss what God is doing. If God placed a judgment, you should no shape or form try to please that person. I hope you understand. Sometimes the, God is correcting someone because they haven't got... The, God only corrects whom he loves. But sometimes we Christians come in and we're trying to babysit that person and try to be kind to that person and try to be gentle to that person and invite her to your house and give money when in fact what's happened to that person is God's judgment. You've got to know the difference. Matthew 16, 23. Jesus is telling his disciples how he would suffer. And you remember that Peter rebuked Jesus. Get, and Jesus responded to him, Get behind me, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Stop your thinking. You are Peter the apostle. Stop this. Human compassion. Can, can, cannot dictate the flow of the prophetic. Human compassion cannot dictate the flow of the prophetic. Human compassion, being kind, being gentle, try, cannot dictate nothing. The flow of the prophetic operates without any, any other in involvement. Well, I have uh, two more, and I think I have two minutes, so one minute for each. Being judgmental. Stops the flow of the prophetic. Pointing out problems without solution shows poor judgment. If you discover the problem but you can't help the person uh, to find a solution, you're not helping them. The prophetic helps. When you hear from God, the wisdom of men is not present. When the Holy Spirit is present, there is personal ministry to edify and create an environment that brings the anointing. Pointing out, point out problems without solution shows poor judgment. If you are going to be prophetic, you need to hear from God. And when God speaks, there is a powerful solution to the problem behind you. And of course, the last one is lust. The true meaning, definition of lust is to engage into a self-absorbed desire for a position, an object, a person, that's lust. You should not be looking for promotion, prestige, and wealth. We are talking about the office of a prophetic person. James 1.14 says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lust and enticements. Well, that's it for me right here. The Lord bless you. I hope you'll be able to listen to this session one more time, record it, come back to latterrain.com, listen to it, send this this latter rain address to someone and tell them how to find uh, the teachings on this idea of, uh, of uh, blocking the flow of the prophetic in your life.
God bless you abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen. Rosa de Sharon